A funny thing about most TEDx talks is that they're always about the future, improving this, predicting that. Everybody is trying to sell you a better future. And, and I'm thinking, what's wrong with the past? Doesn't that have a value too? And I'm not even a historian. I'm a professor in theoretical physics. Still, I like to look back and be amazed. And I, I don't mean just yesterday or last week. No, I mean the real deal. The entire history of our universe. I will show you that the universe is all about history. Just look out of your window and you peer into the past. Everything we see out there can be traced back all the way to the Big Bang and started life as a quantum fluctuation on a cosmic dating show. Let me try and sell you a better past. Now, to get there, we have to start in the present. What is the universe currently up to? Looking around us, we see lots of nearby galaxies. And in a static universe, these will be at some fixed distance away from us. What we see is that they're all moving. And moreover, they're all moving away from us. The scientific explanation for this is that we live in an expanding universe, a universe that grows in time. And in such a universe, all distances increase, including those to nearby galaxies. So what does that mean for the past? Well, a universe that grows in time would have been smaller in its earlier days. And if you go back sufficiently far, you get to a moment where everything you see in the universe comes together in a single point. How long ago is this? Some 14 billion years. This is when the Big Bang happened, and the universe started expanding, taking all the galaxies along with it. So the universe is a bit like an ancient blowfish, one of these beautiful sea creatures that have a bad temper. Something pissed off our blowfish some 14 billion years ago, and it's been puffing up ever since. Now, you might be wondering what pissed off our blowfish. Well, that's exactly what my research is about. What happened during the Big Bang? OK, so we live in an expanding universe. So how big is it? Well, that's funny. We don't know. And in fact, it's fundamentally impossible to know. We can only observe one part of the universe. It's like a bubble that we live in. And the reason for this is the speed of light. Everything you see in the universe has had to send light towards you. And this takes a bit of time. Now, for the sun, this is around eight minutes. But for a faraway star, this can be billions of years. So literally, everything you see in the universe is history. And it's actually hard enough to predict the present. Now, if you look out sufficiently far, you come to light that's been traveling ever since the Big Bang, basically forever. This light is like an echo of the Big Bang, and it forms the edge of our universe. And in fact, this echo is very important because it teaches us what the universe was like during the Big Bang. And what else is out there? Further beyond this echo, we have no way of telling. Light from those places hasn't yet had time to reach us. It's like somebody could have sent us a message billions of years ago. And it still hasn't arrived. We have no idea what's in the message, who sent it, or even what the universe is like out there. Some theories predict that there could be different laws of physics, and perhaps even different dimensions. Now on to the central question in my research. Given this funny universe, what created all the structures inside it? 
Well, we found that everything you see can be traced back all the way to the Big Bang and started life as a quantum fluctuation on a cosmic dating show. You can think of it as follows. Nature is full of particles and antiparticles, and these always want to get together. You know, matter loves antimatter. Electrons are looking for positrons. Particles want to get together with antiparticles. And most of the time, they're incredibly successful at this. They get together and vanish in no time. And that's why we don't notice that there's so many particles and antiparticles around us. Right here, right now, in this very theater, there's a lot of this dating going on. Even empty space is full of particles and antiparticles looking for each other. These are quantum fluctuations. And they always come into the world in pairs. They're looking for their partner, and they find it, and they vanish. Never to be heard of again. Ever. Now, there's one massive exception to this story. During the Big Bang, the universe was expanding at this incredible rate. So all these quantum fluctuations, electrons and positrons, particles and antiparticles, they came into the world in pairs, but they were torn apart because of the expansion of the universe. And they were still looking for their partner, but they couldn't find it because it was on the other side of the universe. So the universe is also a tragic love story. It's about quantum fluctuations that couldn't find their partner and at some point ran out of likes on this cosmic version of Tinder. <laughs> now, what does that have to do with structures in the universe? Well, after the Big Bang, the universe was born, and it was perfectly smooth, apart from these tiny, tiny quantum fluctuations. These were looking for their partner, but couldn't find it. And instead, they started accumulating other and other particles. And in this way, they've grown into all the structures that we see in the universe. Galaxies, clusters of galaxies, even larger structures. All of those arose out of those quantum fluctuations during the Big Bang. So this tragic love story was actually great news. It was these lonely quantum bachelors that have built the universe since the Big Bang. Pretty mind-boggling, isn't it? Now, what's perhaps the most amazing about this story is that we can actually test it nowadays. We've sent satellites up into space, and we've measured this echo of the Big Bang that we talked about at the edge of our universe. And this gives us an idea of what the universe was like during the Big Bang. And can we explain what we see? Oh, yes, we can. In my research, we've built a model for the Big Bang that predicts exactly the quantum fluctuations that we observe. So we seem to be on track towards understanding the Big Bang and the origin of all structures in the universe. We're all descendants from lonely quantum fluctuations looking for a partner on this cosmic dating show. Thank you very much.